Can you hear me now? Yes. Very good. <laughs> it's that <laughs> damn manual mute button, huh? <laughs> it was, I had the volume turned down because I did, wanted to make sure that I didn't interrupt Lucas. I didn't know if I was muted or not. Yeah. Uh, uh, for a mere $90, you too can impress people with a wall of foam. <laughs> It's it's good. It's it's quite stylish. Um, I I treat my office as a a set now, so as well you should. I'm sure you've got the camera people coming through. You've got the what the Gary Vaynerchuk camera crew following you around. Like <laughs> oh, D Rock, D Rock his his video guy. I need <laughs> yes, I need a video guy to just follow me around. I, I, I have actually one. I have, have somebody to follow you. me around. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I love it. Um, and this is why you're, you're, you have the, uh, the, the personality to do that, I would say. And that's why I love doing these website teardowns with you because we can just sit here and talk for 30 minutes. We'll review some sites together and, uh, and let's let, you know, maybe crush some people's hopes and dreams, ruin, <laughs> ruin their lives, but at the same time, give them some advice and feedback that hopefully helps them uh, optimize their site a little bit better. I want, I want to... 80% inspire people, 10% entertain, and 10% embarrass you into action. <laughs> I if love you it. walk away with homework, like I don't want you to take notes. I want you to take action items. When I go to conferences, when I hear talks, that's what I do. I essentially create a to-do list for myself. If it's just a note, well, I could just, by the time I've written it down, I could throw it out because you're just remembering it to, writing it down to remember it later. Whereas with this, I want you to have action items. I want you to think to yourself, wow, that's a thing I could implement on this site today and make more money. I want to give you stuff to email to your developer to keep them busy. Yeah, that as well, for sure. Well, we've got a couple of new submissions here. One from, let's see if I get your name correct, Ridhima, perhaps, uh, avrani.com. This would be a good one to start with since we got it live submitted. And I know I've given you a few uh, via email that we can pull up as, as we go through them. Sure. Uh, so how do you want me to do this? Share you want to share your screen, Sh share your browser. And I can do it too. I just figure you'll be the, the yeah, main. let me drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then which one am I starting with? Um, if you want, whatever you think is best, but, uh, here we have submitted of a a v r a n i dot com. Could you just drop it in the chat for me? Yeah, it's, it's in here. You should. There we go. Oh, I, right. that's what happened. Yeah. And front. All right, I got that open. And now share let's the share the screen. And how much time do I have here? How much? If, should We've I got 30 minutes. We're, we're about 10 minutes behind on all of our sessions, but it's fine. We can, we can stick to the 30 minutes. If we wrap at 20, that puts me back on track, but there's no pressure. <laughs> 10 minutes behind is kind of my MO. This is my seventh virtual summit, I think. Yeah, I'm, it, I'm pretty used to it. Like <laughs> I knew when I logged in that I would just be, I'd be waiting for 10 minutes. <laughs> and I'm every sorry. time it's always a good, well, it's funny, it's always a good talk. Like I listen to Lucas, so that's pretty good. Yeah. I actually tried to screenshot part of his, one of his slide decks. I'm like, oh, I should tweet that. Yeah, exactly, right? It's, yeah. That's a good sign. For me, it's, if I share what you said on Twitter, that's, that's the highest compliments I could pay you. Absolutely. All right. So you, you, you got hit with the pop-up right away. Um, yes. What's your take on that, by the way? So this is a fairly standard pop-up. I like that it has the product. It says, stay in the glow, 10% off your first order, hashtag glow and conquer. Uh, so I would reverse it. I would actually, I want the, the offer, the 10% off your first order to be the very first thing in here. I want to read that first. Heck, maybe it should even be above the image. For pop-ups, I like to do a full bleed image, meaning like just do a background image with the text over it, and then enter your email address, subscribe, and it usually include a note like, hey, you can unsubscribe anytime. I know it's silly to include it because you can unsubscribe from all newsletters, but <laughs> I think it's important to note like, hey, we're at least thinking about it. It's um, funny. I've actually gone in like the, uh, like those, those little, I'm, you're talking about the, the tiny line right below the subscribe button that says you yeah. can unsubscribe at any time. I've turned that personally into almost like kind of a troll of, of the unsubscribe. I think one of my pop-ups says, 
uh, by subscribing, you will instantly be the talk of your next dinner party and <laughs> and you will gain 10 IQ points. <laughs> you know, anything you could do to include a bit of fun. The internet used to be so fun like 30 years ago. I want 25, yeah, 25 years ago. I want more of that. I want to bring that back. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, I mean, if it's on brand, do it. Landing yeah, on this site. So I always go straight to these promo bars. I want to know, can I click on it? Does it do anything? It does. Oh my gosh. It's a call to action. Subscribe. And when I click it, it takes me to the refer a friend page. All right. That's a little confusing. Subscribe for exclusive offers takes me to the refer a friend page. Mm -hmm. So I want, I like that we've got a call to action. I like that we link to something, but let's make those things match up. Um, that might be, so a different headline or a different page. So also, there's our, if you're taking them to a page page, be really careful because this page is, a, is kind of a dead end page. Um, instead, yeah. maybe that could just trigger the pop-up that we already saw uh, and, and so that it's, it's just keeping you on the same page you already are. Especially if you're yeah. on a product detail page, you don't really want to have the person leaving, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, yeah, I like that idea. 100%. Good work. Uh, on this thing, we know people read in an F pattern, top to bottom, left to right. We've, so we've got the logo first thing. That's great. That helps orient me to the site. I know that it keeps things, um, that it looks professional, which is always great. However, this logo has perfect space to add a tagline to it. So the name and the logo don't actually give me any context as to what this is, as to what the, the brand is. So just having a really straightforward tagline like um, modernized cosmetics, uh, something to that effect. Just tell me, be more straightforward with it. Like the, the, one of the, the truisms in marketing is uh, clarity trumps clever. So having a clear tagline would be very helpful. Yeah, maybe it's like ancient beauty to you or something, I don't know, whatever it is, right? But um, I, yeah. I agree completely. And I, I see the products, but I still don't completely understand what they are. Of course, there's always going to be more context when we come to the site via an ad or however else uh, yes. they're generating traffic. But yeah. And so then going. we've got in our main menu, it's our products, our ingredients, our story, our journal. <sighs> we could probably just drop the word hour from all of it. Like, let's make it more, make it more inclusive. I, don't, I try to avoid anything first person on a site because I don't want it to be about the merchant. I want it to be about the customer. They're the ones doing you the favor. They came to your site and they're going to consider it and maybe 2% of the time they'll even buy it. So I always want everything to be you focused, focused on the customer as opposed to first person. So I don't know, maybe consider dropping the hour products. Um, the other thing that's a little strange here is like our products and our ingredients. And then it's like in the exfoliator, in the serum, Really, the ingredients has the much is the first time it's become clear what you're selling, right? We actually have the the categories, the types of things we sell, whereas our products is like, well, exfoliator, serum, elixir. Okay, it does tell me. Um, but what would be really cool is if this was a mega menu, this our products thing, like so we could have. There's a few enough items in here. We could have like a two row grid, and then we could have a photo of each item. And then the title, that would be really cool. I think that would be very helpful um, to helping people understand what it is they're shopping for. Do you have an example of a mega menu? That, if you have another site off the top My of your head? My favorite is always um, Recycled Firefighter. Yeah. Uh, I set this theme up myself. This is for Jake Start, Recycled Firefighter. But there, boom, we open up wallets. Wow. And you can see here. Now, like, because he's got multiple wallets, but it, it's hard to picture if I just describe it to you, showing it to me, oh my gosh, that makes so much more sense. And then he can even have this little, this note from the owner, right, as part of the menu. I thought that was very clever. Uh, yeah, and it, in this case, I could see a description going alongside each of them. So maybe it's, you know, the image is a little bit smaller and yeah. then below there's like a one liner of maybe when to use it for yes. the XYZ customer, for the, you know, ABC customer. Yes, uh, so we've got this hero image, all right? Well, all right, the main menu, I want our journal. I'm going to guess, yeah, this goes to a blog. Keep that in the footer. Really use the blog as a way to get people to the site organically through organic search. Once they're on the site, focus entirely on shopping. So I would ditch the our journal and leave that in the footer. 
our story, I think your story, I think about, I think that stuff's important. I would leave this, our ingredients and our products. Man, I, I wish, all right, if we get rid of our journal and we get rid of our ingredients because I'm going to assume it's part of the product descriptions and then that really cleans up this main menu. So then our products, we could break that out. It could either be the entire menu, could be just the product names, let people see it at a glance, and that also make it easier to use, especially on mobile, because now this isn't a nested menu anymore. Um, I yeah. would experiment with that because it's like makes it much more obvious. And, and it looks like the complete ritual might be like the core product, and then everything else is like one of those. So I'm thinking maybe put the complete ritual at, in like a big box. That's where you want everybody to go. And then if they don't want the big product, they have the other smaller product. So highlighting the main product. Um, or the all-in-one product first, and then kind of considering everything else as a backup um, if, they, if they don't want to go all in on, the, on that. Do you see this Instagram photo? Ignoring emails is self-care. Oh, I yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it, it shouldn't be here, right? I don't know. Uh, I, it, in next week, all Instagram widgets break. Yeah. Insta Facebook said, hey, we're going to kill the API that is powering all of the ins these Instagram widgets. So you either have to get rid of it, switch to an app, or the thing I like doing now is just pick your top four or eight images and it put those in a, a grid on your homepage and link them to each relevant product. So essentially you could fake having an Instagram widget. No app to pay for, no app to load, no app to break. It'll be reliable, fast, and free. Uh, yeah. So everybody with Instagram widget, pay attention. You got homework to do. You got to replace that thing. Yeah. Um, going back up here, this hero image, it is beautiful. You have striking photos. So good. Big, bold headline. There are a couple issues here. Clicking on this thing does nothing. Oh my gosh. At the very least, this should link me directly to the product. If you're going to show it to me, let me buy it. I'm like just pounding on my keyboard here. It does nothing. Uh, and then the other issue is text as text in an image so is is a makes you a real bad boy don't do that blind readers can't use it uh google search engines can't see it and often it like it's it can't break well so it's not responsive i don't like it um yeah. i want a real headline and i want a button and i want this thing linked so when i click through it takes me to the thing yeah. here we've got the other thing to consider is all right it sounds like you've got like I'm going to guess that the complete ritual is the most expensive thing. And then the complete ritual discovery is the same thing, but in travel sizes. That also means the travel version is sort of like a sampler. It's a cheaper version of the complete ritual. For new customers, you will have very likely have an easier time selling the cheaper version of your product. So you have an advantage here in that you have the sample size. That's the thing I would probably... Um, I would make sure that you're offering to people. The way I think about that offer is I actually want them to see the two. So the, yeah, the, the big one is $200. I want them to see that first. And then you could also allude to on the product detail page of the complete ritual or buy the sample size for 86. And I might remove travel and call it like starter kit or something along those lines and, and make it the entry level offer. It depends on how well the product's selling. And, um, and if you, what the, like what, what you see from the customer, but that could be a way to kind of grease the shoot. It, it's either you, you have kind of two options, either it's a fallback like purchase or it's a actual starting a stepping stone to getting them to purchase the big product later on. And what you could do, I would make sure in both of these descriptions, you link to the other one. So in like the, the travel set, you could say, Hey, like, or if you want the full size, get it here. And then on this one, uh, do the same thing. Hey, if you want the travel size, which is uh, less expensive or is 80, the travel size at $80, you could click through, um, click here. I think that would be, would be a smart way. Cause certainly you're going to have people who where the objection is the price um, on here. But as long as we're on a product page, let's talk about this product page and then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, I love that we have 142 reviews. Social proof is so important. I wish we had some of that social proof on the homepage. Some pull quotes, um, something, something to, to leverage that on the homepage. And we've got our, our tab description here where we do have ingredients. So then, all right, 
if we have ingredients to the product description, we could probably get rid of this, this drop down menu if we wanted to. I love that you tell us how to use it in here. Um, if that's a common objection, I, don't know, I might say how to use should probably be like the second thing, but you could heat map it and see what people click on the most and then order them that way. Uh, what do you I think see, of the tabs? Is it a, like, how does that equate to user experience, especially on mobile? So we know from Baymard Institute, they do usability research, t probably 20 to 35% of your users will never click on any of the tabs. So the downside to using tabs is you, you're effectively hiding content. Now, search engines can still see it, and the way most tabs are set up, they can anyway. Um, but a non-trivial percentage of your users will never see any of the stuff that's in here. So something like clinically results, clinical results seems really important, but it's a long section. So maybe like we have highlights from these things, um, like res you know, results you could expect, puts you know, the top five in here to try and sell it in the description. Like if you're doing a tab description, the primary tab should really include a summary or overview of what's in the other tabs. You know, like under how to use, it could be like an easy four step process. Yeah. And then check out how to use, right? Um, this is so huge. I think what, yeah, what you just said, I, I am thinking blew a couple people's minds right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Um, now I, Merchant's attraction to tabs is that the idea that no one reads, no one scrolls, except it's not true. People do read, they skim first, and then they read the relevant sections. Mm -hmm. So if you've got focusing on readability, focusing on legibility is one of the best conversion rate hacks. So like on this site, I would bet money on if you just bump up all the font sizes a little bit, the site will convert better. So here, let's see what size this is. This is small. It's size 14. I usually use size 16 for body mm -hmm. copy as my minimum. And then if you want to get really wild, there are um, uh, typographic scales you could follow. So I like if you Google golden ratio typography calculator, it will- Say that again. Golden ratio typography calculator. You'll find one that'll tell you like, all right, 16 point is my base. So then my heading should be 32 point and you'll end up with a very balanced, beautiful site. Cause like right now, um, this all this feels a little small add to cart feels a little big and then title feel like if i'm all doing this all in reference to the title size but remember the web is 90 percent typography so if you focus and understand typography like for me with a design background that is the most valuable thing that's the thing i lean on the most when i'm designing websites is focus on the typography. Like I will literally consider, well, how many characters per line on average will I have in this product description? If I have a font, if I use this font and this font size and this width, and is that ideal? Because go look at a, any magazine or newspaper. I guarantee they will have a much narrower column and characters per line than you do a, anywhere on your website. And often narrow columns are easier to read. Now, what I do like about this, um, as an example of this typography, I like, if you notice how big that gap is between the two lines, that's called line height, that's mm -hmm. great. I often bump up line height to make it easier to read. Here they've got, they nailed it. <sighs> I gotta get off my, my uh, typography hobby horse. No, I, and I just realized how bad I am at typography. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I thought I knew something about like, you know, the first thing to do with convert, converting on a website, but. If you uh, want to be a pedantic, <laughs> obsessive web designer, oh, you yeah. got to start with typography. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right, we're Lucas is adamantly requesting a review of the one chip challenge. It's here. It's here. Oh, in chat. I did the one chip challenge. It oh, was my gosh, <laughs> brutally, brutally hot. Yeah, um, I don't know how to get back to the chat. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, well, computers, man, go to the top, top mid of the screen and there should be like view options chat. I can spell it for you too. It just might be a little, yeah. I'll just go to Packy's website. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. One chip challenge. So like right away, we're talking about typography and how you should make it bigger to make it easier. Holy Look crap. at the size of the fonts on this site. They're huge. And they take up 
the full width. And then here, like, all right, it's, it's big, but they narrowed the width of the thing. So it's like a, a real designer made this and thought about it and did a, a great job on the typography here. It's big, it's bold, it's easy to read. All right, one chip challenge. <laughs> oh, this is cool. So they lead with, this is, they switch to a landing page. The only thing I'd criticize about the landing page is that they've got navigation in here. If it didn't have the navigation, then the only thing I could do is scroll down. They've got this great video. Oh man, if you add video to your website, even if people don't watch it, it increases conversions because it speaks to professionalism. And here it's, they're essentially using it as social proof where it's just person after person after person trying it and doing the one ship challenge. And then they got celebrities in there. Wow. Um, so, all right, it's probably better before it ended, but they showed the product up close so I could see it. Uh, they've got the, again, more social proof and then our newsletter and that's it. So huh. what's going on here? Why are they doing this? What do we learn from this? One, leverage social proof. So they're doing it via video. They're doing it via uh, this gallery. Social proof, hugely important. They have a strong focus on typography and professionalism. The site is clean. It's well-designed. It's easy to read. If you want to make your site easy to read, increase the font size. Don't use a crazy font and increase the line height. Suddenly, the website gets easier to read and your conversions go up. And then uh, they're using like very traditional landing page ideas where they have really stripped out a lot of the links that would take you off of this page to force you into the things they want you to do, which is in this case, sign up for the darn newsletter. Yeah, yeah, the challenge is over. So I think we're, there was a call to action on this page that they've-, they've Yeah, removed. this would have been better, but that's okay. Uh, if you are wondering about the What Chip Challenge, it is certified the hottest tortilla chip in the world. It is 1 million Scoville units. It is brutally hot. If you, I should post the video on Twitter. It's on my Instagram. All right. <laughs> is it Kurt G. L Elster? It's uh, KG Elster KG. on Instagram. <laughs> and I have, I've got it in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'll find it here. Oh my God. All right. Woo, Pixie got Beauty. It. All right. If you're going to drop that in the chat. Yeah. If you want to see Kurt in pain, oh, actually, I have to. Who doesn't? Uh, all right. Let's take a look at Pixie Beauty here. And so this site, again, if we're going to talk about typography, they've got, it's very low contrast. Contrast is one of the things you want to consider. So like an easy win for the site, well, you want to keep it on brand, but if you just increase the conversion by making the, or increase the contrast by making uh, the, the typefaces, a little darker, it would make it easier to read. Like they could still be this cool um, tan brown color, but just a little darker, increase the contrast. Um, and for people with, uh, with vision issues, they will appreciate it. Um, so we've got here, they, this is a good example of a menu. So what I love about this main menu is there is nothing non-shopping related about it. A hundred percent of what's in the main menu takes me to a product or a collection, nothing else. That's how proper e-commerce stores run their main menus. Go on Best Buy, Target, Amazon. You will not find like my blog in there. It, you won't. So they lead with new and they lead with last chance. I assume last chance is a sale. It's actually a, a really great way to set up your main menu is have new and that is the first thing and sale is the last. And you will find if you heat map it, those are the things people click first. Now, I don't necessarily care if they buy out of those categories or not. If I can get them to the homepage and then get them to start shopping, they become significantly more likely to buy, even if the thing they clicked on isn't what's going to make them buy. Because it is the difference between someone walking past your storefront and walking in. That's the way to think about it. Um, and then if we get them to browse, okay, now we can retarget them with dynamic personalized ads to what they looked at. So maybe they come back and buy again. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were talking about mega menus. Here, these guys got one. Fantastic. Color treats. Don't know what that is. Makeup. Uh, I would consider increasing the line height between these lines. And man, there's this. my guess is these catalogs are huge. So it, when you have a catalog this big, one of the, you have to think a lot about taxonomy and how you set up your, your main menu. And one of the easiest things you could do is try and reduce it. So 
anytime you get a list that's got more than five items in it, that's when we tend to see um, analysis paralysis where people just get stuck in indecision and then bounce instead of clicking on anything. Um, so if you can, so you may want to combine some of these categories to reduce it. And I love that they've got bestsellers in here as well. These banners and graphics are really beautiful. Same problem though, they're, they're entirely image. But hey, at least I could click them, right? I could click through to, to shop on these items. Uh, we've got a collection grid here and it does a strange thing. Notice it's got, it's a slider. So what I found is people won't necessarily use a slider. Whereas if this were just in a grid, they're much more likely to scroll on it, right? Than use the, the carousel. And we've tried this. If you put, we've put up to a hundred items in a collection grid, people will scroll all the way through it. And I think the reason these sliders came about is, is merchants are afraid of, um, uh, of losing people to scrolling too much. Now that if they're scrolling through something interesting through a collection grid, they'll browse through it. Whereas like this thing is just kind of clunky and unnatural. Um, I'm glad we've got some info about the brand. Petra, personally, view the blog. What might be cool is if we had like the full story, put that right on the homepage. Let me know who I'm buying from. Much easier to get people to scroll through your story on the homepage than it is to like, all right, I got to go to the blog. I got to read the blog. Like it's not going to happen. Um, this looks, we got featured promos. These look very good. Our newsletter is a safety net. And then again, uh, <laughs> this Instagram widget though is powered. You can tell this one's powered by an app. The app-based Instagram widgets will not break. They, they should be fine. Gotcha. And then this footer, whoa, this footer's tight um, and hard to read. You've got, got two calls to number. action down here. Look at that. We could sign up for our phone number and our email address. I have never seen that. And then if you try to exit the site, I think you'll get hit with a pop-up which asks for your Instagram handle. Um, Interesting. So now we've got three, we, this is, these are important pieces of information, but how do we, it feels like both, both at the same time seems wrong. What, how do we decide? Well, by revenue, or you know what would be really cool? I don't know if, it, if it's doable. Um, it's doable for somebody. If you said, enter your email or phone number, sign up. And it was one input to handle both. I, you just came cool? up with a new app. Uh, <laughs> go build and launch this app. <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody's got to be. You know, I'm, I'm going to message Clavio. I've never seen anybody do that. Enter your phone or email. And obviously, right. you can recognize the difference between the two. It's a really simple, if has at sign, then send this way. If has ten, you know, nine or 10 digit numbers, send to this field. <laughs> SMS okay, or just inventing email. new apps right here on the spot. Oh, I just wrote it down. I know the, the director of product at Clavio. I will message him later today and be like, I have a brilliant idea. <laughs> I love it. I think that so. that could be the future. In three years, that might be every field. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's reasonable. It could be done. Oh, I love, all right, pages. This just didn't, this is a very cool example. So it's a page, but let's call it a collection or category landing page. It's very cool in that it's explaining to you, hey, here's the new product. Here's why you should be excited about it. And here it is. My only suggestion here is, man, like I got to do all this scrolling anyway. Let me just scroll through the darn product as opposed to these, these silly sliders. And it's scroll jacks. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. What's scroll jacking? Scroll jacking is where the, rather than just obey how, I, how the human scrolls through their thing, the browser uses JavaScript to try and make it. It triggers every so yeah, often. It like forces the scrolling. It's very strange. And you, you mentioned earlier that video is a good conversion rate booster, but I know that movement on site is typically a conversion rate hindrance. Except for vi video, it, for whatever reason, video is the exception. Okay. But yeah, there's like a lot of themes have, Shopify themes anyway, have that like animation built in where images load, uh, like slide in. They look cool. It's fun. Oftentimes the stuff breaks. And every time I've disabled it, it has been a, a positive. So I would <laughs> avoid unnecessary motion if you can. So are you saying that even with all of these themes running across thousands of different stores, nobody's trying to optimize the conversion rate to create like the most optimized theme possible? Is anyone doing Oh, this? those exist. <laughs> those are out there. The problem is they're very opinionated. 
which is fine. I'm very opinionated. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but they, sorry, got a little bit of coronavirus. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's not contagious term. through here. <laughs> yes. Um, but like, so every brand and audience is different. So what works for one may not necessarily work for the other. And those like conversion rate optimized themes tend to throw everything at the wall. So they tend to get like a very uh, direct response as seen on TV look very quickly. I see. Or maybe it's the opposite and it's like, click here to purchase and that's the entire website. <laughs> it's like one of the other two. I, I don't remember what the image was, but it's like, you know, when your CRO goes out of control, there's like this like site and it's like uh, every single way of button and a slider and a arrow and it's like, okay, somebody overdid it. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You don't want, you want to throw everything in the kitchen sink. Um, this product page does some interesting things here. I've not seen a site where it's got the title twice. I don't know what that's about. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but um, I like the new badge. Some themes support that where it's like if an item is in a collection called new, then it knows it to add the new badge. Um, the select your shade. Ah, so here's what this add to cart button. My guess in a lot of themes, it defaults to the first thing. The person adds to cart and then a week later, the merchant gets an email. Oh, you sent me the wrong thing. I need to exchange it. You're like, no, this is what you ordered. And it's because it defaulted to a selection. The person goes, oh, I want, you know, the other one. I want floor. And then they add to cart when really it's set to juicy. So this is especially like if you're in apparel and you're getting a lot of exchanges for size small and you can't figure that out. This is what's going on is because it defaults to a size. So here they have fixed that. Um, the share button heat map this page. I can almost guarantee out of 2000 visitors, you'll have one, maybe two, if that at most use these share buttons. Yeah. I would ditch them. It's very rare. I mean, would it be weird if like your friend was just like sharing random products they found on the internet? I don't think people use social media like that. Unless it was the most profound, unique, innovative product, but you know- we, In which we, case we they know how to share it anyway. Yeah, they, they, and we know when they're gonna share this product and it's when they put it on their, their face. Uh, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen until- Because they're looking at a product page. Yeah. Until I do it, then I hold up the product, I take a picture with it. That's how they're going to share. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got this, the wish list. I like wish list uh, apps. I used to fight them, but I've consistently seen them for, and it's not going to be for every brand, um, but they're worth a try. Uh, wish list, wish list plus or wish list pro by swim apps. See, it's pretty good. There, they got their free plug. Um, <laughs> I like that one. It's something worth trying. And then uh, down here, they did something different with their product descriptions. It's in three columns. I really like that. This is like a good answer to reducing horizontal or vertical scrolling um, without using tabs. That's very clever. I don't know why other people aren't using this. It's just three columns. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's clean. It's simple. It's exactly what you want. So it's, it's short. Those, those tabs that we saw on the other website had a lot of information. So it might be about cutting that information or putting like a very small more info button. Right. Uh, but if the they, columns, yeah, full ingredient. Smart move. List. Yeah. They've got more products you love here. All right. Keep them shopping. Uh, yeah, I want this as a safety net. I want my other products here. And then they've got the reviews. I would flip them. I would always, I think social proof is so important. I would put the reviews before the more products you'll love. Like and then they do something interesting. There's a sticky add to cart at the bottom. Yeah. Isn't that kind of clever? I like it. Follows you around and it allows you to make the choice and it's got the image choices. So it's not it's like well a done. drop down. I, I will caution uh, people, be careful with how many sticky elements you have, especially on mobile, because it eats up the viewport. So if you have a site where it's like, you know, the Pixie Rewards button, this is probably Smile or a similar app that's sticky. And then I've got, this thing is sticky. And then a lot of sites will have like a sticky header or menu. And then I have like a couple other sticky elements. And pretty soon there's just like a very narrow space in which I can actually see the web page. <laughs> so use them. It's very much like dessert in the food pyramid. Uh, use sticky elements sparingly. Yeah. But I do agree with, I think sticky add to cart is, it's a preference of mine so that you, they can scroll through, but they don't have to go back up to that button to make the, uh, make the purchase. Yes. Um, uh, we're, we're out of time. No! Like, I can't have you do anymore. Um, we, we're going to move into Evan, who, uh, Kurt, you might want to 
stick around for this one. He's going to blow your mind with how to use TikTok for e-commerce. Oh, wow. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. This is, it's the largest uh, campaign, largest case study ever on, and, and probably for a really long time. But before we move on to Evan, Kurt, how can people get a hold of you? When can they get a hold of you? What, 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 do you, what can you do for e-commerce merchants? Oh my gosh. Uh, Google me, head to kurtelster.com, sign up for my newsletter. That's my real email address. So if you reply to it, ask me any question, I will reply with a thoughtful answer. I love it. And, and how, what, when would people want to work with you? I want to make sure they know. <laughs> so I work exclusively with Shopify merchants and we could help you uh, upgrade to your new theme. We could help you diagnose conversion issues with your current theme, or we can help migrate you to Shopify if you're ready to get a good website. Oh, he went there. Oh, what? Yeah. No, that's just screwing around. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm getting the podcast in here as well. Cool. We Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I host a podcast. He, he hosts a great podcast. I should probably plug my own podcast at some point, I guess. <laughs> I'll make sure that everyone here has your contact info. Um, yeah, I love, I love those teardowns and those nuggets. I've got them in our show notes. Everybody, if you're joining us, if you're a little bit, um, if, if you're just coming in here, let me go ahead and share the show notes with you one more time. Uh, just one second while I get the. We are taking notes on all of these sessions and they will be available later for you to, uh, all the sessions will be up on YouTube so that you can review them. Um, let's go ahead and move into the next one. Thanks again, Kurt, for your Thanks, time Derek. as Appreciate always. Blow, blowing our minds um, <laughs> with just typography. So simple. <laughs> awesome. Talk to you later. We're going to bring in Evan now.